Hello everyone and welcome to Above the Yellow Line. My name is Taylor and this is the NASCAR podcast where we talk about the drivers, news, theories, recaps, and more. This is the second podcast I've done so far, so if you're tuning in from the last one, welcome. And if you're new to the podcast, also welcome. Today we're talking about the driver lineup for 2021. Last podcast I talked about the schedule for 2021 and the differences, the new tracks, the old tracks, some of the exciting things that we're seeing for this season. And what I've noticed about this year as a whole is even though we're not even on the next gen car yet, there is a ton of changes this year, specifically with the new drivers coming in and the new teams. Change is great. It can be overwhelming. But when it comes to NASCAR and change, it's usually a really good thing. And I see the incoming talent in the new ownership in NASCAR to be an extremely good thing for the sport. It's getting in views, it's getting in new fans that would otherwise not watch the sport, so I think that the change this year is fantastic. Before we go into today's topic, I did want to mention that at some point I am planning to do a video podcast as opposed to just an audio podcast. So you're not just staring at pictures the whole time. So that is the goal eventually. Um, As I'm starting out, though, I just want to do audio just to see how it goes. So again, I appreciate you sticking around as I'm trying to figure out the right platform and the right way to spread the love of NASCAR to you and spread information as well to whoever's listening. So thank you very much. Now we're going to go down the list of all the drivers that are Full time for the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series season. We're going to gloss over the drivers that are staying where they're at, and we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about the new drivers coming in and the new teams and some of their team owners and other fun facts that I threw in along the way. So, we're going to start with the first four drivers in the lineup, and I'm going to lump them together because they are drivers that have stayed on their teams for this season and have been on the same teams for the past few seasons. So we have the driver of the number one Chevrolet, Kurt Busch, with his crew chief, Matt McCall. He is staying at Chip Ganassi Racing. We go to the Team Penske Ford, number two, Brad Keselowski, with crew chief Jeremy Bullins. The three-car Chevy of Austin Dillon, with Justin Alexander as his crew chief, staying at Richard Childress Racing. And the four-car of Kevin Harvick, who completely dominated last season, had a super unfortunate ending to the season last year with Ronnie Childress staying as his crew chief at Stuart Haas Racing in his Ford. So after the number one, two, three, and four car, we have a shift with the number five car coming back into the sport at Hendrick Motorsports with driver Kyle Larson and crew chief Cliff Daniels. Now I'm going to talk about Kyle Larson in this ride for a few minutes. We know who Kyle Larson is. He was at the 42 at Chip Ganassi, and then he was taken out on suspension from Chip Ganassi Racing um, due to an incident on iRacing where he used a racial slur. I'm not going to go into the whole incident. I'm just going to say he is back at the sport, given a second chance. And he is a an amazing talent in the sport, so I am excited he's back in getting the second chance that I believe he's worked really hard to get. Um, with the second chance does come the sponsorship. And the sponsorship, I feel like, has been kind of iffy up until this week. Um... There have just been articles published about his sponsors for the Daytona 500 in the first few races of the series um, with Nations Guard and his other sponsors for a few more races of this year are Cincinnati and Freightliner. And now that the sponsorship is on board, I'm feeling a little bit better about his ride in general. I think he has a ways to go with, you know, gaining kind of trust back, but I also think getting back into the car and seeing how he does. I have no question in my mind that he is going to be a powerhouse this season, almost the dark dark horse after leaving the sport and then coming back. I think he's going to do really, really well. If you look at the lineup at Hendrick Motorsports right now, we have Chase Elliott just got off of last season winning the championship. He's leading that team. It is a young driver of teams. It almost reminds me of the Earnhardt Jr., Johnson, and Kane and Gordon lineup that we had a like years ago, which is really exciting to me. We have William Byron, who got his first win last season. Alex Bowman, who won two or three times last season. So the what's happening with this team is exciting me so much. And with Kyle Larson on board, and after you've seen what he's done on his offseason with 
World of Outlaws and all the other series that he's been a part of, no doubt, either this year or in the next few years, Hendrick Motorsports is going to be a team, like a, a force. And I am super excited to see Hendrick come back into the game, pick up the Chevys, and just dominate the series again. I'm hoping that happens. And I'm cautiously optimistic for the future of Hendrick Motorsports as a whole. So now we're going to move on to the number six driver, Ryan Newman, with crew chief Scott Graves at Roush Fenway Racing, staying where he was last year. Moving on to a new car in the sport, the number seven of Corey LaJoy, crew chief Ryan Sparks, who was staying with him after he moved teams and cars from the 32 car at Spire Motorsports. Spire Motorsports is moving to a two-car operation. This is their car in the Cup Series. Next up is Tyler Reddick in the number eight Chevy. Um, crew chief Randall Burdett at Richard Childress Racing. I want to mention um, Tyler Reddick had an amazing rookie year last year. He did not win Rookie of the Year, but I think if you take out Cole Custer's win at Kentucky Speedway from last year, the points would probably work in the favor of Tyler Reddick winning that Rookie of the Year award. He was always in the mix, even with the top-tier drivers of the sport. You always saw him intermix near the front at a lot of the races. So I'm hoping he can carry that momentum over to this 2021 season. And I'm really hopeful. And I think um, one of my weird predictions of this year, I think he's going to win a race. I have a feeling. I, I want him to win a race. I think it's going to happen. After number eight, we have number nine. We all know number nine, Chase Elliott, with Alan, Alan Gustafson as his crew chief at Hendrick Motorsports. 2020 NASCAR champion, road course king. He's going to have a huge advantage this year with the seven road courses on the schedule. He's going to have to watch out for Martin Truex, though, who I think has a really, really good shot of winning one of the road course races this season. So Chase Elliott is one to look out for, and we have to see if he can keep his title, or give the crown over to another driver. After number nine, we're going to go to the 10, 11, and 12 cars. The 10 car of Eric Almaroller at Stuart Haas Racing. The 11 car of Denny Hamlin with Chris Gaypart as his crew chief at Joe Gibbs Racing. And then we go to the number 12 car of Ryan Blaney with Todd Gordon as his crew chief at Team Penske. Those three cars have stayed at their homes. The drivers have stayed at their homes, so there's nothing new there. Um, we, I talked about this in the last podcast that Jenny Hamlet is the reigning champion of the Daytona 500 for 2019 and 2020. So there is a lot of pressure on him for this Daytona 500 to keep his title and make NASCAR history as winning the crown jewel three years in a row. So I'm really excited and hopeful that he can pull that off this year. Now we've reached a new driver for next season, Chase Briscoe in the 14 car at Stewart Haas Racing. New to the Cup Series, not new to the sport at all. He did an incredible job last year in the Xfinity Series, winning nine races. It's easy to compare Chase Briscoe to now teammate Kevin Harvick with the 2020 season with nine wins each. They were both wildly successful. It seemed like they were winning every single weekend. It's also easy to compare them in the downside of last season where they both fell short on their championship hopes. They seemed like the easy victors for last year's season. Unfortunately, Kevin Harvick didn't make it to the championship four after a rough race at Martinsville. And Chase Briscoe did not win the title after a really, really rough end to the race at Phoenix for the championship four race. Even though he didn't win that title in 2020, that does not at all discount the success he had last season. I truly believe Tony Stewart made a very wise decision to put Chase Briscoe in the 14 car, replacing Clint Boyer, who was going up to the Fox Broadcasting booth with Jeff Gordon and Mike Joy to breathe new life into the broadcast. Not saying that I don't like the Fox broadcast. I actually prefer it over the NBC. Not to say the NBC broadcast is bad in any way. I just like it a little bit more. But I think having that personality that we've grown to love from Clint Boyer in the booth is going to spice things up a bit in a really positive way. So looking forward to that in the 2021 season, as well as Chase Briscoe taking over in the 14 ride for Stuart Haas Racing. A very good call by Tony Stewart, yet again, to replace the great Clint Boyer with an amazingly talented driver, Chase Briscoe. While mentioning the next four cars, I want to say that they will be out of order for a specific reason that... 
There's a lot to unpack between the 18 car of Kyle Busch and the 20 car of now Christopher Bell. Um, talking about them together side by side is a lot easier than um, talking about one than bringing up another driver. It just works better in my head, so bear with me here. Um, the 17 car of Chris Buescher is staying the same with Luke Lambert as his crew chief at Roush Fenway. And Martin Truex Jr. is staying in the 19 car at Joe Gibbs um, with James Small as a crew chief. And speaking of Martin Truex at Joe Gibbs Racing, there is a lot of just weird changes for me at Joe Gibbs Racing. A lot of the changes they've made have been really rash. A lot of the Toyota changes in general that I, I don't know if you have listened to Tony Stewart talk about the Toyota platform in general, but there is a lot of quick changes. There's not enough rides for a lot of drivers they bring in. It's a little wishy-washy right now. Um, I am in a grants um, with Tony Stewart on that and... Part of, um, I love Joe Gibbs Racing, but part of the issue I have with their program right now is I feel like there is a lot of quick decisions being made based on one season. Um, in particular, um, Kyle Busch, um, after six amazing seasons with Adam Stevens, after two championships with him, um, after he had this rough season, he is getting a new crew chief, Ben Bashore, um, saying Joe Gibbs Racing, obviously. Um, and then Christopher Bell is getting Kyle Busch's old crew chief, Adam Stevens. And Christopher Bell is also now at Joe Gibbs Racing, which he was at Levine Family Racing in the 95. Um, but that team has closed its doors due to the financial toll that COVID took. Levine Family Racing um, did partner with Joe Gibbs. So the change wasn't that big of a deal. I just... I'm very hesitant on Christopher Bell taking this top tier ride after the season he had last year. He didn't have a lot of great finishes. Um, I, I'm just not sure. And he kicked out um, Eric Jones in that ride, who did not have a great season last year. But I did not feel like Eric deserved to leave that ride. Um, he will be at Richard Petty Motorsports this year. So I'm curious to see. The, the equipment is not as great as Joe Gibbs. So I'm curious to see how he does. The, the thing that I'm just not sure about, and I maybe this is Joe Gibb Racing's thinking, is that um, they're moving Adam Stevens to Christopher Bell because Christopher Bell will be a future driver at that team. Kyle Busch not saying he's retiring anytime soon, but he is a veteran driver. There is one point where he is going to step away from the sport, and I think putting a veteran crew chief with a younger driver, kind of what we've seen at Hendrick Motorsports as well, is probably the way to go to prepare him and give, get him ready to be at that team and be successful at that team. So as much as I don't like the changes that are happening, and I think it's really rash and really frustrating, I think in the future it might be a, a good call and just to see how it plays out. So that whole spiel is over about Kyle Busch in the 18 and Christopher Bell in the 20. It's going to be interesting. I hope Kyle Busch can come back this season um, a lot stronger, and I really hope Christopher Bell can also be a lot stronger this season and show that he does fit in the number 20 car and that the change was a good change. So we move on to the 21 car of Matt DiBenedetto with Greg Irwin as his crew chief at Wood Brothers Racing. Unfortunately, after this season, um, he will be leaving the ride. Um, Austin Sendrick will be taking his place. I love Austin Sendrick. I was super excited when he won the Xfinity Champ last season. He'll be taking over the 21 um, car in 2022. I'm hoping that Matt finds a great ride after this season as he deserves. He was super close to winning last year a few times. Um, so I'm hoping that he's really proved to himself that he does deserve a top tier ride and that he is able to get that. Moving on to the 22 car of Joey Logano, crew chief Paul Wolf. He is staying at Team Penske driving in that Ford. So nothing's changed there, but what has changed is the next car we're going to talk about, which is the number 23 of 2311 Racing, brand new team to NASCAR with Bubba Wallace at the wheel. 2311 Racing is owned by Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin. Michael Jordan, the iconic basketball star, Denny Hamlin, the number 11 Joe Gibbs racer coming together to form an iconic team of iconic numbers for the 2021 NASCAR season. At this point in the podcast, I've mentioned several new teams and several new drivers. There's a lot of change happening, especially with the schedule. Change is a challenge, and I don't say that for a change to be a bad thing. I say it because 
this much change is hard to wrap my head around. And I think that's why I'm doing these two podcasts in particular, the last one about the 2021 schedule and this one about the driver lineup, because there are so many new tracks, new tracks that are coming in, tracks that have left, new teams, teams that have left, drivers that are coming in, and again, drivers that have left. But the change with the incoming talent and incoming leadership is extremely refreshing and welcoming to the sport. And not only are we seeing a change within the sport, but even outside of the sport with the fan base, there is a really big shift. And a lot of that we can attribute to Bubba Wallace and the bravery he has displayed this past year with inciting change into the sport, making it more accepting and welcome. I've actually noticed the biggest shift on Twitter. I do a lot of my social media for NASCAR on Twitter, and I've seen the biggest shift in the fan base there. And I know social media can be hostile for a lot of communities. There can be a lot of backlash, a lot of cancel culture, but I have seen a really big intake of NASCAR fans on Twitter, a lot of conversations that are really welcoming and inviting and refreshing. Um, So the, the change is not only within the sport, but it's outside and it is all very positive change. And I attribute that to Bubba Wallace, and I am excited that he is joining this 2311 team with icons like Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin to eventually become an icon of the sport himself. Now we got to move on to the 24 car of William Byron, new crew chief Rudy Fugel, who is replacing Chad Canals after he retired last year um, to take up a bigger role at Hendrick Motorsports. William Byron has one win under his belt after last season um, at Daytona. I really hope Um, He steps up this year. I think it's time for him to show what he can do on Hendrick Motorsports after Alex Bowman had a successful year last year and after the championship year Chase Elliott had. I really hope he steps up, and I'm excited to see what he can do. The next two cars, uh, Michael McDowell in the 34 at Front Row Motorsports and the 37 car of Ryan Priest um, with Trent Owens as his crew chief at JTG Daughtry Racing say the same. We have another new driver this year in the 38, Anthony Alfredo, who had a lot of great success in the Xfinity series. Um, And he did run um, one of the road course races last year. He replaced Austin Dillon, I believe, after he tested positive for COVID. He ran amazingly for the first half of the race, and I believe he finished in the top 20. Um, So I think he's going to do great in the uh, the, excuse me Cup series um, when he starts full time. Um, he is in contention for Rookie of the Year. Um, this car, the 38, was formerly driven by John Hunter Niemanchek, who moved down to the Truck Series for Kyle Busch Motorsports, which I think was the right move to do. So um, I- anyway, I'm excited to see what Anthony Alfredo can do. Um, with rookies, um, last year's Rookie of the Year, Cole Custer, is staying in the 41 car um, at Stuart Haas Racing. He made the playoffs last year by winning at Kentucky, um, which is impressive um, as a rookie driver. I'm excited to see if he can continue that momentum next year. The next two drivers are um, new-ish to the sport, um, new-ish to the series, and new to their rides. Ross Chastain is moving up from the Xfinity Series, taking over the 42 car. The Watermelon Man is at Chip Ganassi Racing now and is taking over from Matt Kenseth who filled in for Kyle Larson after he was taken out of his ride after four races in the 2020 season. Eric Jones, not new to the sport, not new to the Cup Series, new to the 43 ride of Richard Petty Motorsports with Jerry Baxter as his crew chief. I mentioned the shift with Christopher Bell um, in his ride. Um, So we did talk about that. Um, This ride was formerly driven by Bubba Wallace, who is now at 2311 Racing. I super, super want this to be a redemption year for Eric Jones. I really don't believe he deserved to leave the 20 car. Um, So I'm hoping he can maybe win this year or he can have a lot of really good finishes and kind of show, you know, he didn't deserve to leave, um, but yet again, make a name for himself um, and kind of separate himself from the group that was Joe Gibbs Racing. At last, we are down to the final cars of this year's 2021 lineup. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the 47 for JTV Daughtry Racing is staying put. The 48 car is now being piloted by Alex Bowman after Jimmy Johnson retired for the after the 2020 season. I think Alex Bowman is the perfect driver to fill Jimmy Johnson's shoes after he had a lot of momentum last season. 
I think he is fully capable. I am confident that he is going to win with Greg Ives as his crew chief a few times this year. Really excited to see that. The 51 and 52 car of Rick Ware Racing has Cody Ware and Josh Balicki as full-time drivers. They have been part-time drivers in the series before. Cody Ware has 23 starts in the Cup Series, one of the starts being last season. And Josh Balicki has 22 starts in the Cup Series from last season alone. So they should be interesting drivers to watch now that they are full-time, just to see how they do. The 78 car is a not a new number, but a new car with a new team that live fast motorsports. BJ McLeod will be driving for them. This is his first full year in full-time of cup driving. Finally on the list, and I'm excited for this team, it's Daniel Suarez in the 99 car at Trackhouse Racing. Um, this is a brand new team this year um, owned by Justin Marks, and the co-owner is Pitbull. That to me is so cool. I love seeing all the celebrities and the big names being brought into the sport. I think that is great for getting fans involved, and it's also great um, advertising. And um, I don't know. I just think it's really, really cool. Um, Suarez in the past four years has gone through four teams. He has moved around quite a bit. I do think Daniel Suarez is very talented. I just hope that he stays on this team for a little bit and we're able to see what he can do in the right equipment um, with some stability. Um, his crew chief is Travis Mack. Yet again, Pitbull, I can't emphasize this enough, Pitbull is a part owner of this team. Now that we've talked about all the drivers, I quickly want to mention that there are already talks about the championship four on the 2021 preview show on NBC. The talent brought up interesting names for the championship four. There's no question that Chase Elliott was on that list for a potential championship four driver. Kyle Busch was on that list. Martin Truex Jr. was on that list. Joey Logano was on the list. There's no surprises there. What surprised me is every single one of them mentioned Kyle Larson as a dark horse to be in the championship four. Now, the surprise isn't with his talent. The surprise is that he's taken a year off of the sport. He's going to be in a brand new car with a brand new team, and they're confident that he will make his way into the championship four. That shocks me. I want it to happen. I want another Chevrolet to be in the championship four for the first time in a long time. And I think Kyle Larson, as shocked as I am, does have a real chance. We'll have to see how he does once the season starts. But I don't think they're wrong. I actually don't. And I think it's going to be really cool to see when that championship four is made. Who's in? What are the surprises just like last year? Who's heartbroken? It's going to be super fun. With the 2021 lineup laid out and the championship four predictions on the table, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to listen to the podcast Above the Yellow Line. My name is Taylor. Again, I'm going to try to keep these podcasts under 15 minutes if possible with all the changes this year in NASCAR with the schedule change and the lineup change. There was a lot to talk about, but I'm so glad you stuck around and listened. Really excited for the 2021 season, and I want to thank you again to listening to Above the Yellow Line where we talk all things NASCAR Cup Series, drivers, news, theories, recaps, and more. Until next time, see ya.